Okay, in this video we'll be demonstrating uh, uh, what an abstraction is and what, what do we mean by uh, the term in this context. Abstraction is any uh, structured software block. It usually is uh, based on software architecture but it also can be uh, a form of an aspect, something you uh, need to be have need to have everywhere uh, within your solution or, or in certain area that does not fit in a logical architectural form. Uh, it can be as small as required. For instance, it can be a server side uh, service uh, uh, including a client proxy both generated at the same time from the same abstraction serving for instance having a Windows a Microsoft stack backend with uh, Windows Phone client, Android client, iPhone client and etc. Any kind of client serving, uh, connecting to that backend. And in that, that context usually the uh, server may be generating uh, in parallel several different uh, interfaces for different co different clients to connect to. For instance, in this uh, uh, common query segregation full uh, architectural abstraction, we generate uh, the server side for uh, accepting both uh, JSON and uh, XML inputs in parallel for uh, Windows Phone and uh, for the Android clients to use. For the abstraction structure, uh, everything is contained within a single folder in the Visual Studio. The, the abstraction always contains one and exactly one XML schema file uh, and from one to many uh, T4 template generators that are, are the ones that, ones that realize the abstraction. Then there is one XML, one to many XML files actually uh, that uh, are the actual design content the one that realizes the abstraction's design level. These are the uh, user entered XML content that, that's then realized through these uh, various generators, the various levels of the uh, application or areas of the architecture. So, uh, in this SQLRS abstraction, the schema actually uh, identifies and structures the architecture that we are enforcing here. We recognize that we have the comments, the queries, aggregate routes, events, and the normalizers. And this is the core of the uh, architectural abstraction in the SQL as an abstraction of our demonstration. Uh, note that this is a, f a full freedom XML schema. Whatever modifications we would need to make here, we could simply modify the schema and alter the generators to, uh, and the XML content to match the changes and everything would be up to date immediately. So here, uh, for instance, we have now decided to uh, define commands in a way that they can be mapped directly to search and events. So that if, if we have one-to-one -one event to command relation, we only have to define the event strictly with the strict parameters and the command is automatically generated uh, related to that event. We don't have to uh, define identical command separately. So uh, this XML schema has two, two major roles in here. It uh, constrains the architecture or the content to of course exactly match the schema but it also serves as a design level documentation uh, for the software designers. The annotations in the schema visible here for instance command for making modifications for the model and these kind of text are all visible in the actual XML uh, when the abstraction is used. So here where we have the actual XML file there can be multiple depends on the use on some some abstractions it's useful to have only one on some others it's useful for for having uh, for instance one for each class that the abstraction is using so in that case there will be multiple multiple XML files. So here all the annotations in the uh, in the schema become become guiding intelligence here when the abstraction is used. So the usage of the annotations in the schema 
completely removes uh, the need to uh, have guidance documentation for the software designers outside the abstraction. Then for the realization part we have the T4 Visual Studio Standard coding generation templates within the abstraction. And we usually have these as many in as many purposes as we need. We might have, for instance, se several different ones for generating the uh, uh, human readable word documentation from the abstraction. And in this full scale of uh, architectural abstraction, we have, uh, for instance, uh, one that produces commands that simply generates the standard uh, NC Quarters libraries uh, uh, compatible commands code uh, from the abstraction data. Then another example is here that we have Java OData client for the Android. Its template is a bit, bit different looking, C sharp still in the T4, but it outputs Java. And this, uh, this output is actually used uh, through uh, uh, Android's IDE. So the abstraction doesn't have to care wherever it uh, generates the outputs. It, it, only, it only matters where they are needed and who, which uh, party is using them as an input. So here it only generates files they are directly to the uh, file system where the IntelliJ IDEA can use it. What makes this technology so flexible is that all, all modifications, everything that's uh, covered in the abstraction is in source code format within this folder. The compilation is used uh, linking the existing designer files from here to actual compiled projects. So abstraction never produces anything binary, but only, it only uh, uh, outputs uh, source codes or uh, in textual format things. And basically everything here is modifiable within one change set, one check-in or one commit. So uh, the second that I realized that this abstraction is lacking some feature in the architectural level or and or within the code generation level, I can instantly modify it, see that my solution still compli compiles and check it in. So uh, when some, some other developer gets the latest version, it's always in the compiling state, whatever uh, version he checks out. So this is the brief... Uh, brief uh, for the brief overview of the abstraction, what it's all about in the context of Visual Studio projects.